In this lesson, we're going to look at the benefits and usage of database resources. Many applications will use a database for their durable, i.e. persistent data needs. There's different types of storage and interactions possible depending on which database solution I use. But the key point of these solutions is they have very rich abilities to interact with the data be that running certain queries or running analysis. The whole point is to get insight into my data. Now, yes, I could install database software into a virtual machine. I could create an IaaS VM, install any different database software I want, and it would run. But remember that idea of responsibility. Generally, as a company, what I care about is what differentiates my company from somewhere else. Managing an operating system, even managing the database is generally something that doesn't set me apart. I focus on the app and the data. So there are many managed database offerings in Azure. We think of them as PaaS services because it's managed for us, but it's not delivering a complete business function. I still have to write some app to interact with the database to provide that business value. Now, there are solutions that are based on Microsoft technologies. There are solutions based on third-party open source solutions. So we'll start with the ones based on SQL. So remember, SQL Server is the Microsoft relational database solution. So the whole point about that relational nature is I can define those relationships of the data to each other. I have the idea of a fixed schema. So I define, hey, these are the tables I'm going to have, and these are the columns, the attributes, and the format they can actually be. So we have this concept of a table, and this is gonna to apply to really any relational, so this is the point, these are relational, database, we have this idea of a table which has that schema and it's going to consist of rows which are records and then we have this idea of columns at the top and those columns are defined in that schema. These are the various kind of attributes, the properties of the entries that I'm gonna put within here. Now, one of these is gonna be kind of a key. So this is gonna be a unique value for every record. And one of the things we can do is we have other tables. I could establish relationships between those keys using a foreign key so I can normalize the data. So I might have a table for addresses, a table for orders, uh, a table for inventory and I can establish relationships between those so I'm really efficient with how I'm storing the data. That's that normalization. So we're splitting the data into these very defined sets of data to store it in the most optimal way. This comes back from the days where disk space was really expensive, so we wanted to be as efficient with it as we can. So this idea of SQL Server, there's actually different offerings. So there's Azure SQL Database. This is a complete managed offering. There are various SKUs with different aspects of scale and different features, but this is complete managed as a PaaS service. Then you'll actually see there's Azure SQL MI, managed instance. Now the big difference about this is this is a PaaS service and there's certain limitations on some of the features it exposes to you because it is PaaS, it's this multi-tenant. With managed instance, it actually runs in your VNet and it's dedicated instances. So I get great compatibility with existing workloads. If I was gonna migrate something from an on-prem SQL Server to Azure, if I was using maybe some of the more advanced capabilities, I may use this Azure SQL MI. If we actually go and look, there's a document that talks about the differences between regular Azure SQL database and Azure SQL MI. 
And we can start to see some of the key things that are very different. So for example, one of the big things we actually have is this idea of the common language runtime. I can use that with Azure SQL MI. Cross, cross database queries, I can do with Azure SQL MI. Cross database transactions, yes, I can do. If we keep scrolling down, things like distributed partition views, there's also things around the agent that we can do as part of Azure SQL MI. So the whole point of this is if I was moving something from on-premises running on SQL Server today, and I was using some of these specific capabilities, chances are if I have to have that full set of compatibility, this is the big one, this idea of the SQL Server agent. I can't do that with Azure SQL Database, but I can with Azure SQL MI. So depending on what I was using, Azure SQL MI, if I was actually migrating it, might be the better option for that compatibility. And there's a Microsoft Data Migration Service that I can actually use to migrate from an external to Azure database into one of these solutions. So those are the ones based on kind of SQL Server. And then you have these open source. Now there's many different open source offerings out, out there. Some of the big ones are MySQL and Postgres. If you're using those today, there's an Azure managed database for MySQL, for Postgres, for MariaDB as well, actually. So once again, these are relational databases, but these managed offerings have things like built-in backup built-in high availability. They have great scale options. They have full monitoring. And so if I have an existing application today that was using Postgres or using MySQL, and I didn't want to worry about changing my code and how I interact, well, Azure has managed database for both of those. And again, there's ones from MariaDB as well. They can run in kind of this special container format or as VMs and I have a lot of flexibility in the size and the performance I actually want those. One interesting note, Postgres, both of these are relational databases. They're based around a single box hosting the data and running the various queries. One of the options for SQL is actually something called Hyperscale that gets me this huge distributed architecture for the page servers that host the data. Well, Postgres has an extension called Citus. And Citus is all around this idea of multi-server and basically sharding the data. That means separating out the data over multiple servers. That gets me increased scale. It gets me increased performance. So with the managed database for Postgres, there is a hyperscale offering. So in Azure, this option here is its hyperscale. And that uses the Postgres Citus extension. It gives me that ability to have things like uh, reference tables that are replicated to all of the servers for commonly looked up data. It, then it has those distributed tables that gives me that sharding. So this gives me massive distributed scale over many boxes. Now, all of these so far were existing solutions. It was, hey, Microsoft SQL Server. It was MySQL or Postgres. And so there were things we can do to make them cloud, but they're still those pieces of software. So generally, it's a single primary that we can write to, and we can have async read replicas. Well, then we actually have this option in Azure called Cosmos DB. This was born in the cloud. What that gives us is there's multiple models. So we have multi-model. And we have also this idea of different capabilities around consistency. 
I, if I have this distribute over multiple regions, maybe I can actually write to all of the regions and then eventually it will get consistent. It will replicate and get them up to date with each other. Or maybe I need a really strong consistency and only one of them is writable that will then replicate out. Or maybe I need it consistent within a certain session, i.e. the reads and the writes are in the same order, no matter what I see within the session, but other sessions I don't care about. So we have this ability to pick what I actually want from this. I could actually have a replica to every single region in Azure if I wanted with this. And the whole point of this multi-model is there's different ways I can think about data. So for example, there's the idea of documents. This is very common where it's self-describing. This could be a JSON document, for example. So here we commonly use APIs like SQL and MongoDB. So Cosmos DB lets me do that if that's what I want. I have the idea of the column-based um, interactions. The content rows and columns um, have various column families in how I relate that data together. So I might use Cassandra as that API on how I think about using that. I can absolutely have the idea of tables. That key value pair type data. Um, etcd, for example, I can interact. There's different APIs for the Azure storage tables and more that I can use to interact. I can even have graph. So graph, we think of things like Gremlin. Graph is based around the idea of relationships between things. So I have different objects that actually have relationships. So these could be nodes, these could be people. And then I have edges on how they relate to each other. So maybe this is kind of John, and John could be the boss, and they have employees, other people here. So it's how I can define relationships between different things. So Cosmos DB supports all of those. It gives me a lot of flexibility in how I actually want to interact. And once again, there are other offerings in Azure. These are the key ones that are focused around AZ900. So hey, I want to use SQL Server, I'm using SQL Server today. I'm writing it for the cloud. I don't have existing limitations. Hey, I have a SQL database. Hey, I'm migrating a SQL database to Azure, uh, but I need it to integrate with my virtual network, or I'm using common language runtime, or I'm using the SQL agent. Hey, I use Azure SQL Managed Instance. I'm using Postgres or MySQL, and I want to use a PaaS solution. Hey, Azure Managed Database for MySQL or Postgres. If I need Postgres, very large scale, high performance, hey, I'll use hyperscale. I'm writing a new application in the cloud. Uh, I want to be have this document-based storage. So this is not a relational DB. Cosmos DB is not relational. It's what we call NoSQL schemaless. I want to have replicas in every region. I want to be able to pick my consistency. Cosmos DB.